Welcome to the American Grit Podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Sharp. Joining us today, Gabby Malcolm. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Hello, doing fantastic. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. You were in the Navy. Uh, you were in the CBs. Uh, you streamed. Well, that's all that we need to know about her. So bye. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Episode over. I can go home now. <laughs> yep. Send her back. <laughs> Yeah, I was. Yeah, my name is Gabby. Um, I go by Miss Anarchist on Twitch. Um, I was in the Navy for about five years. Um, my first two years in the Navy, I was what's called undesignated, but pretty much was a bosun's mate. And then I had switched my rate and became a CB, so construction battalion. Um, I had done a few underways with um, the Nimitz, and then I did a couple of deployments with my battalion over in the CBs in Mississippi. Um, got deployed to. Africa as well as Spain. Um, while I was in Africa, I did convoy security um, element team as well as um, became like a collateral intel specialist just because we didn't have many of those. From barnacles to intel, quite yeah, the journey. Yeah, yeah. I, I moved on up, and I had no idea what the <laughs> what the heck I was doing. <laughs> um, well, to but, be fair, nobody ever does when they start out, but uh, eventually you figure it out, and uh, it's yeah. just a matter of time. So either you get out or you get fired. Pretty much, and thankfully I didn't get fired, but yeah, you know, I did. I did pretty all right. Um, but yeah, I worked with the Coastal Riverine Squadron out in Africa, and then when I was in Spain, I just worked on um, a lot of intel stuff as well as multiple different um, construction sites and and whatnot. And then got out in 2020. Um, became, Why'd you get out? Well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> this and that. <laughs> this and that. No, um, it. I just. When I went in, I knew I wasn't going to be a career person. Yeah. I just knew it was like I wanted to do it for a time as well as utilize it to help myself get school benefits because mm -hmm. once I, I'm from Los Angeles, so I was born and raised in, in the hood in California. Um, you know, me and my family didn't have a lot of money growing up, um, so I couldn't really afford college. Mm -hmm. um, so I utilized um, that benefit, you know, wanted to use that like after I got out of the Navy. So I stayed kind of like teetered on like a little bit back and forth about staying in every now and then but you know just you know I I miss the clowns but I don't miss the circus that's fair enough and I I totally sympathize with the idea of like using uh, service as a way to give back to your country but then also uh, to get the benefits that you're entitled to as per your contract mm -hmm. um, so it sounds like you were from the Florida of Los Angeles <laughs> yeah <laughs> Kind of, yeah, I was, uh, so I was from like Highland Park, East Los Angeles. So it's, I played pretty, Grand like, Theft Auto. I'm vaguely familiar. Pretty much full GTA <laughs> Now we got to go back to Vice City, my, no. my neck of the woods, you know, yeah, you're, so you're right. you're full right. circle. Yeah, you know, but GTA 6 coming out soon. Yeah, I just saw the trailer. <laughs> Miami. It's yeah. Fantastic. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. And speaking of, um, after you got out of the, uh, the military, you found yourself, uh, in the gaming community. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned earlier, you know, your handle being Miss Anarchist, mm -hmm. um, that has been something that a lot of veterans have gravitated towards after service, uh, mm -hmm. the gaming community. And it's funny because you can go from being a, uh, an engineer or an infantryman or an intel analyst, and then you find yourself playing like uh, Elder Scroll or Stardew Valley or mm -hmm. Call of Duty. And there are some parallels between uh, the military and the gaming community, like you said, the personalities are there, the, yeah. the camaraderie and stuff, mm -hmm. and more importantly, the community. And the reason why uh, we uh, were so excited to, to speak to you today is that you started developing that community as a way to bring like-minded peoples together and uh, give them an area where they could talk about their mental health and they can um, express their own uh, stories and listen to other people's story and be there for each other. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit about how that started from as you were getting out and to where you are today? Yeah, definitely. So like I said, I got out, I went in in 2015, I got out in 2020. And when I got out in 2020, that was obviously peak COVID, like everything kind of popped off, you know, and, um, you know, I had I had to get out of the Navy and I moved all the way from Mississippi to Washington State just because I had lived up there before and I knew kind of the layout of the land. And I knew in my head like what I wanted to do career wise, but I also had in the back of my mind like gaming and getting into streaming was something that I really wanted to do for years. You know, I always there was so many people that I had looked up to from the time I was like 12 or 13, that kind of paved the way in gaming on YouTube and on Twitch. 
um, where I had seen them and they were like the first people to ever do like, hey, I'm going to post videos of myself playing video games. Yeah. And it was the most entertaining thing for me. And it was also a very therapeutic thing for me because yeah. I would be deployed and I would remember like coming home from like, you know, 15, 16 hour days where I was just beat the hell up dude yeah and i would just sit and watch like markiplier or like some of these people on youtube and instantly my mood would shift so you spent yeah. all day grinding uh in your career and then you come home and watch somebody else grind for that elite armor yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> or mainly like horror games you know oh, somebody yeah. just like because that's kind of my niche do you it's ever play horror games in vr i haven't yet all right, I didn't mean to cut you off. We'll, no, we'll come back to that. I'll we'll put a pin in it, but please continue. <laughs> no, you're good. Um, so I would, that's that's my niche. And I, when I first saw people do that, I was like, that looks like so much fun because it was not only entertaining for me, but you can see that they were having so much fun just doing something that they enjoyed. So when I got out, I, you know, not only was kind of the state of the country in a very weird time, but, you know, it, I just was experiencing that first year of getting out where you're like, oh, I thought this was going to feel great, but I don't feel great. Yeah. You know, I felt so like alone because all of my friends were like back in Mississippi or in California or, you know, got stationed in Japan. Off on another deployment. Literally, yeah, off on another deployment or they got out and they went back home to whatever state that they're from. And I was just like desperately trying to find that group of people that I had. But I couldn't find that because I was like, a lot of civilians or people that have never been in that world didn't understand. So I felt yeah. so alone. And then that's when I, you know, invested the time and the money into getting my PC and getting everything set up to stream on Twitch and online. And once I had started it, you know, I, I definitely like pushed, you know, how I'm a veteran out as like, you know, part of who I am because it is who I am. I identify as a vet veteran. It's a big part of, of me and my personality. And and rightfully I, so. Yeah, definitely. And I, I started seeing this huge wave of people just coming in like, oh, I understand where you're coming from. Oh, this is awesome. You were in the Navy. I was in the Army. I did this and this and this. And that had to be like, validating. Yeah, very. And like I started like I created like my own little like discord group where like people can there. It's it's still online. Like everybody still comes and chimes in. I even created like for legal purposes. There are no state secrets being divulged there. <laughs> no, no, nothing, nothing at all. <laughs> like created like little channels like the smoke pit you know like you know barracks smoke pit and it's yeah. like i i go on there every day and i see just like people posting pictures of like when they were in and i was like oh my god i like found my people again you know even though like they're not with me physically yeah but like i can check in with them every single day yeah it's kind of like when you're on post or say you're on watch and you know you're doing your radio checks mm -hmm. with the uh the the other positions and stuff or Maybe, you know, you just touch base with them. Mm -hmm. uh, and so not having to physically be there with somebody uh, has never been um, um, a barrier to communication in the military. Mm -hmm. There was one time I was in Afghanistan. I was on this uh, OP. I was out on this coil. We were watching this wadi. Just like, oh, hey, could you have a drone do it? And they're like, no. <laughs> like, All right, cool. We're going to risk the IEDs and you know, yeah. go sit out there. Yeah. And uh, I knew my buddy, uh, one of the other uh, squad leaders, he just got back from this super long op and he was just exhausted. And so I waited till like three o'clock in the morning and I, I raided over to his position. I made the radio watch, walk him up and I was like, hey, um, I was like, hey, um, uh, Whiskey Maine needs to know uh, how many of your Marines are going to the ball and if they want chicken or steak. And so he woke all of his Marines up to ask them this. <laughs> and I'm pretending like I'm writing it down, you know, like, yeah, yeah. He, he had, he, we prank each other all the time. Yeah. And then like an hour later, I call back and I'm like, and they need the serial numbers for all your machine guns. And so I'm just like <laughs> harassing this poor man who's just trying to get his 14 minutes of sleep before the next mission. <laughs> and, you know, he was several, you know, kilometers away, which, you know, in Afghanistan at the time might as well have been halfway across the country with all the IEDs and yeah. not being able to move at night. Right. Uh, so just not being there physically, but still being able to, to communicate mm -hmm. and have that, um, that, that sense of that you're not alone. Yeah. that there's someone out there for you, even if they're not uh, physically near you. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. And that, that was the main thing that I struggled with when I first got out because I would meet, you know, new people, whether it was at like my new job or, you know, just out and about in society. And I, I just didn't get the same feeling that I get when I see like you or, you know, somebody just that has been in our world. It's kind of like you kind of like just have this feeling where you naturally gravitate towards each other 
you understand you have the same type of humor where it's like, you know, others don't, yeah. don't get it. Um, so it was just kind of hard for me. But then once I, I started streaming and I, I didn't think that it was going to really go anywhere. I didn't think that I was going to get like a decent following. I didn't think anybody was going to watch, but it ended up, you know, very slowly just growing into this, you know, beautiful thing where it's just, it's a really nice, like loving, positive community where we all just joke around, you know, with each other and, you know, we had a successful like Veterans Day stream and it was just, yeah, it's been a really amazing experience so far. Yeah, you um, you actually um, not only made an area where people can come together, you actually started to activate the community where you would have charity streams. And you recently had one that was really successful. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. Um, so I partnered with Vet TV and Irreverent Warriors and I did a, a Veterans Day charity stream. Um where we were, we raised, I think our goal was around a thousand dollars. Um, and basically like I streamed for like nine to 12 hours. I don't even remember. It was, <laughs> it was just it a was, blur at this point. It was a whole, it was a whole blur. It just, yeah, yeah. Four, 14 monsters later, you know, they were one an hour. So <laughs> dude is crazy. But yeah, so, um, we went and we, I set a goal for $1,000 to raise for irreverent warriors and the work that they do towards setting up hikes around the country for different veterans and whatnot, as yeah. well as vet TV. And we included a lot of cool donation rewards and kind of created a good interactive experience for everybody. Um, and it, I set up different types of community games. So, you know, in my Discord, I allowed people to like come in and we would play games together and... It just, it was such an amazing experience. And, you know, they would like, for example, you know, if they, if we reached a certain milestone to like maybe $500, then I had to switch towards playing Skyrim in full Viking gear for two hours. <laughs> so, I mean, that just sounds like my Friday night, you know, like. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah. yeah. I was. Do I what was, you love for charity. Like, <laughs> it's a dream, you know? Yeah, it was. It was it was it was a really really fun experience, and then I would yeah. Don't know. let the military don't let the military see that because that is like the anti reenlistment poster. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like this is what you could be doing. <laughs> you could be doing this, or you could be doing something you know important. <laughs> yeah, you know, sweeping the deck, playing Skyrim. <laughs> you know, you know, honestly, which one do you want to go with? <laughs> getting cheated on halfway across the world, playing Skyrim. <laughs> you know, like still gonna just pick Skyrim every day. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And then, you yeah. Know. I, I used to play it until I took an arrow to the knee and kind of ended my professional career. Now I just do it recreationally. Oh, good, good, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Visit the cloud district often. <laughs> yeah. And so you, um, uh, you, you started activating your community and started using it for good, which, um, is something that, uh, unfortunately you don't really see a whole lot. There's uh, people out there that they will, you know, start to get some notoriety and then it all becomes all about them. It's all about me. Look how cool I am and, you know, um, how amazing and wonderful, you know, what I am doing is. And it's really awesome to see, particularly in the, in the, the veteran community, when uh, people who start to get notoriety start using that as a way to shine a spotlight on a worthy cause like a Reverend Warriors. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if there was anybody out there who maybe wanted to get into this community, um, where, where, where would you point them? What tips would you give them? I would definitely look into on, you know, whatever social media that you may be um, that you may be active on. Um, there's a bunch of different kind of companies or communities that I've found personally out there where kind of tailored towards like bringing veteran gaming, you know, communities together. Like, for example, there's, um, you know, like Regiment, like they're, they're one of the biggest um communities out there where they just have you know a giant discord server to, and gear everything towards bringing um military veterans together that love gaming whether that's competing in like first person shooter or just talking shooting the shit about their favorite types of games um i like for example also you know i went to twitchcon this year for the very first time and I had such an amazing experience because there was um, different like veteran gaming meetup, little like community meetups that were scheduled. And I got to meet such good people and I felt instantaneously like at home. Um, uh, and I, we still talk every single day. I play with them every single day now ever since we hung out, you know, when Twitch was back in October. 
But I would just say, really try to just don't be afraid to reach out, you know, and look um, for those types of communities. And then I'm I'm here too. So, you know, mm-hmm. if anybody's ever feeling like they're alone and they want somebody to confide into, you know, and they're a veteran and they don't know what to do, but they do love gaming, you know, I, I like, I create my own little Discord space to where, you know, anybody and everybody can come in and, and just shoot the shit and be themselves. So I would just say, you know, don't be afraid to reach out. And now that being said, does a person have to play like a first person shooter in order uh, to find themselves welcome in this community? Hell no. No. <laughs> I personally actually don't play first person shooter. You don't? Yeah, I no. Wow. It was almost like it was a softball pitch for you to <laughs> knock it out of the park. Listen, Linda, nothing against those games. It's just like, I can't. Look, sometimes I've had a stressful day, you know, and I'm I'm 38 now. Maybe I'm not as good at Call of Duty as I was when I was 19. I just don't want to get just like, just like not only just teabagged and then, you know, roasted yeah. by a bunch of middle schoolers yeah. Yeah. who still have like the fast synops and they haven't had TBI yet, yeah. you know. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, there's like, some games I go like 50 and one, you know, and there's yeah. other games I go like one and 17. Yeah. And those are the ones I remember. So maybe I don't want to be stressed. Yeah. Like I've, I've had a hard day. I don't want to come home and just fucking be so pissed off again for four hours. <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> like real. Just dying over and over again. Yeah, no, like I was like, I was sitting there minding my own business. Some 12 year olds like, oh, give me the discount code to your mom's OnlyFans. I'm like, what? Get shit, get shit on. <laughs> like, for real. <laughs> no, I, I like. On my Twitch, my um, my specific niche that I found is a lot of horror games as well as um, fantasy, like role playing games and different, you know, smaller kind of co op games. Yeah. Um, I just feel like there's again, like if you love first person shooter, that's totally fine. That's awesome. But for me, I just I feel like there's a lot better substance and quality in those games, like you know, Baldur's Gate three, Skyrim, etc. Yeah. You know. And then when I play horror games, people really enjoy me being terrified. <laughs> it gives them a lot of joy. I don't and know what that says, <laughs> you know, I, but I'm going to ask my therapist later <laughs> what that means. I, I'm really happy that me being terrified and having nightmares <laughs> is entertaining for the rest of the, the community. But, yeah. you know, whatever makes them happy. <laughs> for sure. And so um, I mentioned this earlier. Um, I uh, started playing uh, games like, um, I think... Smoke in the Fire, uh, Among Us, like yeah. these games in VR that like, you know, you you know, you can uh, just be minding your own business and like jump scare, you know, like mm-hmm. saber tooth tiger jumps out. Yeah. Or, you know, now you know, yeah. you're being spaced because everybody thought you were the murderer mm-hmm. and the imposter. And uh, so it's interesting how like we are getting into the, the era now where like VR is becoming such an uh, a prolific part of gaming where like mm-hmm. the resolution and the processing power yeah. and the capacity um, it's just getting amazing. Um, and I think that, the, sometimes, like you said, people will think of gaming and it's like, they think of call of duty, right? Mm-hmm. And that's that, but there's so much more out there. Uh, there is a program in, uh, the quest where there is, um, a documentary about the city of Fallujah. Mm-hmm. And so I, the last time I was in Fallujah was in 2007. Mm-hmm. Haven't been back since. Right. Yeah. And so to be able to put on the VR headset and go back to Fallujah yeah. and see the little things that you forget, like the way that like there's always exposed wiring and like the oh, lawns yeah. and the little stickers that kids would put on the light switches that are unique to that city in that area. And it's kind of like this sensory experience without the, the worry that I'm going to get sni- you know, sniped in the face. Right. Right. Which is also yeah. a huge threat in Call of Duty. <laughs> yeah. Particularly in Warzone, you know, I spent like 20 minutes running and then it's just like. It's just. I was like, damn it. I instantly throw a controller across the room. <laughs> yeah. And then like, you know, it'll be like uh, like one of those like dune buggies will fly across my screen. And you just hear a 12 year old, get shit on. Get shit on, nerd. <laughs> Your dog water. I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> and, you know, so to be in this in this area, like I was utilizing the. The, the the tool you know for gaming as a way to kind of like process my own um, my own experiences and my own yeah. trauma and uh, to kind of like be there again was almost a form of exposure therapy right and so um, whether it's you know um, a role playing game or it's a first person shooter or even if you throw on a, a VR headset and you know you the, have the the Wander app which is powered by Google Maps yeah and I'm like oh I I didn't get to go to this one place because it was closed for COVID or yeah. 
Or, you know, I, I spent a week backpacking in Peru and I get to Machu Picchu and they're like, no, all the national parks are closed because the government tried to do a coup. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and so I get to use this, this piece of technology to go there and see what it would have been like <laughs> or to plan my vacations, you know? Yeah. And so um, what is one thing that you wish that more people knew about the gaming community? I guess just how how very like loving and accepting that it is. I feel mm. like um, a lot of people will kind of first look at gaming and they'll think like, oh, it's just something that instills violence or you know anger in people. But it really is one of the most therapeutic things yeah. ever. Yeah, like I I did a decade plus in the Marine Corps Infantry, multiple deployments, but I don't want to choose the mean dialogue option. <laughs> <laughs> to this no. this NPC in Mass Effect, you know, like, because I don't want to be mean to the video game character. Yeah, no, not at all. Like, you know, and I think maybe there, a lot of people, when they first look at gaming, they just think of, like, Call of Duty or just, you know, the, you know, those games that are kind of in your face, like, you know, just first person shooter, just, you know, you're just meant to just kill everybody that's in front of you. But there's, you know, like, I love games like Skyrim and, like, Baldur's Gate 3 that just won game of the year this year because there's so much there's so much like storytelling and customizable genitalia and you know you don't yeah. see that in any other game listen game of the I, year when I saw that I was like <laughs> oh they went there you looked I d I looked <laughs> did you look I sorted the options I I'm I cannot confirm nor deny <laughs> did you choose wisely I I did yeah I did <laughs> I did yeah <laughs> No, um, but yeah, there's there's such a good storytelling to a lot of those types of games and just such good quality to those things. So. Yeah. Yeah. And um, there um, there is a obviously a barrier into getting into the um, uh, the gaming community, at least into the area where you have the the technology or the equipment that performs at a certain level. And believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, we are a professional show here and we had a pre-interview and you were telling me that there are organizations out there that will actually gift setups to troops in the barracks. Yeah. Would you tell us about that? Yeah. So I, I can give an example, like um, one of my friends who, or a couple of my friends that are part of regiment, they, um, and Stacked Up, which is another organization that raises money yeah. towards veterans' mental health. Careful. If you say their name one more time, we have to start charging ad space. No, I'm kidding. Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> no, when you said that, I was thinking we're going to clip that and you can give it to them there we go. and they're going to run ads for it, you know? Here you go, Steve. Yeah, here you go. <laughs> Wink. Um, they, they have... This episode brought to you by... Brought no, to you by... <laughs> <laughs> no, no. no oh, we're awesome. like, Elon, let me get a Tesla. <laughs> hey, Elon, um, I'm going to get a car. <laughs> yeah, screw the Tesla, man. Let me get one of those rocket ship seats, man. You know, like... I want a flamethrower, please. <laughs> Um, now you're speaking my language, <laughs> but yes, oh, charity, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah charity. Yeah. Um, so they'll work with, um, like USAA or, you know, Navy, like bigger, um, uh, companies and they'll kind of collaborate towards gifting just maybe like some active, you know, duty service members that are stationed in a barracks somewhere, or even some, um, you know, veterans just, um, gaming PCs. Um, and different merchandise and games and whatnot. And it really like is super impactful just because those kids, a lot of those kids don't have anything like that. You know, they're maybe just fresh into the military and they don't have much money. They're just kind of trying to make their way. And so when I've seen, you know, companies gift um, some active duty service members and Navy or not na just Navy, but military veterans in general, um, PCs and different video games, it's really you know, just awesome to see. Yeah. Because I, you know, I feel like when I was in there, there weren't that many people that reached their hand out and checked on us, like in that kind of a way. And I wish that more people did that. And it's really, really nice to see people do that for those kids. And to be fair, there are worse things they could be doing than playing video games. Yeah. They could be out there smoking spice. They, they could be out there like getting married to strippers. Yeah. Like picking up prostitutes, like something mm -hmm. <laughs> in Japan, <laughs> like, I, you know. There's, there's a lot of worse things that they could. That do. was very specific. Well, you know. Anyway. <laughs> Allegedly. Alleged. I I plead the fifth. 
out of all the amendments of the Constitution, <laughs> I plead the fifth. No. I've got that one on deck. Yeah, for real. <laughs> all the time. Yeah, so uh, before uh, we, we let you get back to uh, to uh, to gaming yourself, mm-hmm. and um, is there anything that you that you like to leave our listeners with? Um, just you know, for all of the gaming veterans and or people that are you know maybe you're just fresh out of the military, just really really please know that you're not alone, and do not be afraid to reach out to somebody. Um, you are not a burden whatsoever, and get out there. You know, get yourself familiarized with different, you know, gaming communities and don't be afraid because, you know, thinking in your head like, oh, I only play these types of games. You know, I, I'm not going to find a community that I've created such a, you know, small but amazing community to where we all play different types of games. But it's like, you know, when we talk to each other, it's like we've known each other for years. Um, so I would just say, please don't be afraid to reach out and... And so if they would like to um, follow your escapades in the digital world, where can we find you on social media? So I, you can find me on all platforms, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, um, Ms. underscore anarchist spelled with a K instead of a CH because I'm special apparently. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I stream a few times during the week and I stream different um, RPGs as well as horror games. So please make sure to go check out one of, uh, you know, some of my streams if you have the time. And the K stands for Kilimanjaro. Yeah, it, a little Halo yeah. reference? Literally, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I want to ask one last question before we wrap it up. Okay. What is your favorite gaming insult to say? Favorite gaming insult? Yeah. So say like somebody is just like camping or they're stealing your resources or it may be, it doesn't have to be serious, right? Maybe it's just a friend that, that you like to talk shit with. Like what, what, what kind of insults are you dropping? I if I can say it 90%. <laughs> Eric will beep it if it's okay. too bad. So just let it fly. Oh man. Okay. Um, I mean, I would say one of my favorites is always like get shit on, yeah. you know, if you're ass, like get shit on nerd. That's a pretty good, it's a, it's a good like standard, you know, one to say, um, one of my favorite ones is you can't be sensitive and arrogant. You have to pick a struggle. True. Because there's some people out there that they're like, oh, why don't you push this? Why didn't you do this? Yeah. It's like my brother in Christ, you're one in 12. <laughs> I'm not the problem here. Just... You know, like, and then they get mad, you know, it's like, no, you, you can't be, you can't be dog shit and sensitive. Yeah, like, you no. Got, you got to pick one, you know? No. You can, I, I like to go for, for the personal, you know, punches. I like to get really personal. I like to be like, yeah, that's why your dad didn't come home from the crime station. <laughs> I'm sorry, your dad beat you instead of cancer. That's, that's a, a one that I've heard quite often uh be like man i could smell your pepperoni nipples from here <laughs> like how is that possible <laughs> on january 1st 2023 one of our writers alexander pfeffer wrote an article called open your face a brief history of trash talk and gaming where he explores how we went from talking smack to your buddies in goldeneye and n64 to now the digital age where you know, people can figure out who you are through your Twitch platform, your social medias, go out, find out that you got a special cousin and then insult them directly by name in the same chat. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> it's a loving community, but every once in a while you get some turd burglars. It's a loving community, but once in a while I'll log back in just because I'll, I'll download Call of Duty and just be like, you know, I just really want to hate myself again. So yeah. let me play this for like, you know, an hour. And then immediately it's like, whoa. We have not changed since 2009. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you, you, have, uh, you have kids in middle school making all kinds of assumptions about you. And my favorite way to shut that down is like, you're not even 18. You can't vote. So legally, you don't have an opinion. <laughs> yeah, but they do hit it pretty hard. Yeah, <laughs> no, seriously. Sometimes they hurt my feelings. And I'm like, damn. Damn, that was personal. <laughs> like, God. how'd you know my mom said that? <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so uh, thank you so much for taking the the time to come tell us about your story and um, tell us how, you know, you were able to build your community and hopefully our listeners can take away from this that uh, if you feel that there is an absence of resources or a lack of community, there's nothing stopping you from going to do it. We all have jobs or, you know, most of us have jobs. Um, We have uh, things that keep us busy. We have obligations. We have our own hobbies. But at the end of the day, if you could parcel out a little bit of time every day to work towards your goal, you'll be thankful for it a year from now. Yep. 
because you won't be the same person a year from now that you are today, nor should you be. And whether that be the evolution of your skill, the progress of your game, the community that you build, you have the opportunity to go out there and find something and make it special. Definitely. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. Everyone out there, stay gritty, and we'll see you next time here in the American Grit Podcast.